It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. All right, let's talk for a minute about Ian. I know that many people suffered uh, devastation in the Florida area and in Cuba and uh, potentially on the Carolina coast with regard to Ian and the destruction that he left behind. But I wanted to tell you a different part of the story. So there was a group of individuals from our local church who were anxiously engaged in helping people clean up after the storm or do whatever was necessary now. Full transparency, while I was out here in Utah, uh, actually living life to my best, doing the things I needed to do, getting everything ready for my family to return here for a time, uh, Ian came and kind of disrupted those plans And what wound up happening is my family ended up getting stuck in Florida. So everybody was there but me. And I had no way to get to them and they had no way to get to me. It was pretty much the nightmare that you would expect. And uh, there was a lot of frustration. There was a lot of bitterness. Um, You know, they had no food. Well, they had food. They had food from food storage, but they had no hot food. Uh, They had no electricity. And we live on a property with a well, so we had no water. And... uh, the, and we also had, you know, some preparation because we've, you know, I grew up in New Orleans. So I was ready for a hurricane and I knew how to tell people to prepare. But I think, quite honestly, that nothing can ever prepare you for those type of things. It's just, it has to happen when it happens. And it was one of those incidents or one of those things where I felt completely helpless because I was so far away and there was nothing I could do. And I wanted nothing more than to be with my family and help them. And what I quickly discovered was that this was an opportunity for my family to see just how prepared they were and to test the waters and to to get a glimpse into what would happen if there was a you know long-term major emergency and what i can tell you is i couldn't have been more proud and more impressed with my family and the way that they handle things uh but in addition to that this story extends and that's the part i want to tell you about this story extends to other people within our church affiliated group now, there are many of those people who, are, who uh, were affected by the hurricane. In fact, we all were. Uh, we probably had electricity out for the longest. But it was one of those situations where even with 80 hours without electricity, so it was more than three days without electricity, it still it felt like things were under control. At least that's the way it appeared when I was talking to my wife and my kids. What I can tell you is that there was a group of representatives from our church who were chomping at the bit to help with cleanup, to help remove debris, to help to help people get their lives back in order, to help people get back on track. And there were several opportunities, one where a shed fell, another where other things happened. And each time that they asked, hey, is this something we can assist with? The people on the receiving end were saying, oh, no, 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 we got it. Everything's good. Now, while on the surface, you might be thinking, wow, how responsible and respectful that is, at the same time, not allowing people to offer service when you're in a mode of giving service is also denying them blessings for giving service to extend help to others without, you know, um, asking for a reward, right? So we took, uh, we took photos of all the damage that we had, and we took an inventory to things we needed to fix. And we decided that we it would be appropriate to ask them to help us remove one large tree that was bent over, that was damaged, and to help us remove some heavy fence uh, sections to uh, to get those ready for disposal. And let me tell you, uh, the richness of the blessings that came exceeded even my expectations. By giving these people an opportunity to serve, you could tell that they were excited, that they were vigilant, that they were professional, that they knew what they were doing. And that they were so ready to just lift their hands to help someone else. And it humbled me being so far away and knowing that there were representatives who were willing to go out of their way to help my family. Now, don't get me wrong. In no way are we in perfect shape and we have everything going our way and we're right on track to be where we need to be. If I said any of those things, they would all be untrue. But what I can tell you is that I had peace of mind knowing that even when I was far away, that there were still people who cared enough to take care of our family. And that's humbling to me. 
I just want to remind you that sometimes even when you might feel like you can handle better on your own or faster on your own, or even when you, or sometimes when you feel like you are more equipped to do something yourself instead of giving someone else an opportunity, maybe that's the perfect time for you to give someone else an opportunity. Maybe it's the opportunity that they need to grow in faith and to grow their, to grow their ability to serve. And I just want to thank everyone again. I'm not going to call people out by name, but everyone publicly who came and assisted with removal of debris from our house, who assisted my son with cutting up trees with a chainsaw and getting those processed and moved for everyone who called to lend a helping hand or to lend words of support and to all those who just extended themselves. And my hope is that you'll understand that the richness of those blessings didn't go unnoticed and that you will have an opportunity to, to have service bestowed on you when the time comes, when you're in need, and that it'll be forthcoming and that you'll be blessed with all the things you need in that time of need. So kind of a touchy episode today, but I wanted to make sure that I reached out because I'm a firm believer in karma. What comes around goes around. So my challenge to you this Friday is to go out and do something nice for someone. Go, to, go find something kind you can do. Find a way to be a service. And even if it's not helping people remove debris from a hurricane, you know, I'm sure there's something in your community that you can do to help uplift someone and help bring them joy. So as always, we hope you have a great weekend. We hope that you enjoyed this week. And we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care. Yeah.